Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got Gunslinger, Ashwood Asylum, Suicidal. I was trying to pick a map. I couldn't decide in time, and the random got us, so Ashwood Asylum it is. That's okay. That's okay. I don't think many people are here for the gameplay. How many times have I said that while jumping over this exact fountain? Too many, I think. Too many. I know my way around this map really well. How many times have I said that? Look, it's just it's a thing that gets played far too often. It's played far too frequently, okay? I recognize it. I'll make uh, no attempts to change that. Gunslinger as well. Probably, probably be good to, to start moving over to some other perks from time to time as well, you know? Probably won't do that for a while either. <laughs> I still like Gunslinger, it's fun. I published the uh, the second chapter. You thought I was going to say the uh, the second video of the Minecraft series. Haha, <laughs> no, subverted. I've, I've uh, published the second chapter of the Minecraft, no. I, uh, I've, I've published the second chapter of Shara's Many Faces. It's up on uh, Royal Road. It'll be a link in the description to that if you are interested. It's a uh, it's a story about a young lady who is transported to another world. It's uh, currently there is no game elements, but uh, there will be in the future. I just have to figure out a good way to kind of integrate them into the story. Um, there'll be a little bit of romance in the future again. None yet. I, I have to find a way to integrate it into the story. It's mostly about uh, Shara and uh, and her kind of learning the new world and stuff, kind of facing it. She kind of runs with the uh, you know runs with the bulls or whatever it is. Takes what comes kind of at face value and just kind of accepts it. Is is fine with. Um, just kind of going with that what happens kind of going with the flow you know um, but uh, yeah got the second chapter written a little bit of uh, some some character um, introduction kind of stuff left it on a uh, minor cliffhanger you know I hate cl as a as a reader I hate cliffhangers as a writer they're just a lot of fun to write, <laughs> you know? Like, it really is. Um, I, I don't think I'd ever leave a cliffhanger on, like, a really bad moment. Like, I know it's good for your story to leave a cliffhanger because it makes people want to read the next one. I hate it as a reader, you know? I, I, I hate nothing more than when, uh, when I, like, find a story and I get to the end and, and they just left it on this huge cliffhanger like okay is she dead is she alive like I don't know you know a small cliffhanger like tell me that she's alive okay let, let me be sit on the edge of my seat until next week to, to know kind of like you know how does she get out of this situation but like I don't want to be you know you can go too far with it and I don't want to I don't want to ever be that kind of writer but some minor cliffhangers I left it on uh, a, a minor cliffhanger like a, oh What's gonna happen now? Kind of moment, you know, like nothing, nothing major, just a little something. But uh, I'm having a lot of fun writing it. I am. I'm not sure when I'll, ne I'll write the next chapter. Um, it takes time, you know. Like, like to write a chapter, they're about 800 words, which is like three or four pages of a, of a typical book, I believe. So, uh, they're not particularly long, but, like, even writing that takes me a good couple of hours. Just kind of going over all of the word choices and making sure that, uh, I, I've kind of got everything, you know, descriptive as possible and, you know, just, just kind of being good <laughs> at, uh, being a writer, you know, like, trying to be anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just a time-consuming process, so I don't know when I'll write the next one. I have to kind of be in the mood for it, you know? I wanted to, it took me almost exactly a month to write the uh, the second chapter, like after the first one went up. Well, it took me a couple of hours once I decided to do it, but it uh, took me a month to actually get around to doing it. Um... 
I don't want it to be that long between chapters. I'm, I'm hoping for more of like a chapter a week kind of thing. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll take it as it comes, you know? I like Shara though. I was, I was concerned I might... Uh, I might not like her, but I've, I've kind of changed the story a little bit from what I initially planned. Um, a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit, but um, I'm liking her a lot more now, so I'm kind of a lot more excited to write it. I liked her before, too. I was excited to write it, but I like it more now, you know? And that's, uh, that's always a good thing, of course. But the second chapter is live. I get about 10 views per chapter at the moment, which is... Uh, Super nice. I got a couple of, uh, of people who I think I have like a favorite or maybe two or something. I can't remember. I mean, I can go check. Let's go check. Dashboard Royal Road. I have no followers, no favorites, just uh, 21 total views. If I refresh it, yeah, 21 total views. Yeah. yeah that's fine. For uh, for having written, you know, my first story on this website, I have about 10 views per chapter. That that's pretty good, I think. Nicely done. That's pretty good. One flesh pound you know, you got I got 12 pound. views on the first one, and then nine views on the second one. It's not like I had. You gotta you gotta kind of be worried about that too. When it's like, yeah, my my story has like you know, 400 total views. It's like okay, well, is it like 395 views on the first chapter, and then just like no views on the rest of the chapters that's not a good sign you know it means you got a lot of advertising but your story's not really worth reading um but uh, to have 21 on the first and then nine on the second i feel like it's at least so far enticing people to read more most people who read the first chapter it seems like will read the second chapter which is uh very pleasing very nice. It's not, I don't have any comments yet. I'd love to get some comments over there. Some uh, criticism. Nobody's giving me criticism. Nobody's giving me feedback on it. Or I, uh, one of my friends has read it, the first chapter anyway, and they said that they liked it. Um, I don't know. I, I, want, I want a little bit more concrete kind of uh, criticism, you know? Like, you know, I liked this part of it. I didn't like this part of it. I, uh, I, I need that kind of stuff to, to improve, right? But uh, it, feels, it feels good anyway. I mean, two chapters to be uploaded, nothing else, and, and 10 views average per chapter is pretty good, okay? I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with that. So we'll be writing the third chapter. I don't know when, but um, I will be writing it. Of course. I'm kind of excited for the third chapter, because the, uh, the third chapter is when... The first two were kind of development, or de developmental, you know? Kind of... Building the world up a little bit, introducing uh, characters, some places, um, getting things kind of moving, and uh, now that we're done with that part, then done with that phase, we can start to, to actually like do things now, right? Like some of the things that I've been planning for, and I want to talk about it because I don't want to just spoil what the plans are. But uh, you know, we're, we're we're past the just kind of you know this is the world that she lives in this is the situation she's in you know where we're now at the now she has to start interacting with it you know and uh, spoiler alert minor spoiler alert she's a sword she was reincarnated into a sword that's a uh, that's a chapter one spoiler what are you doing going back and forth dude it's a chapter one spoiler. Um, so I, uh, I've got to kind of figure out, well I know how I'm going to do it, but I've got to kind of figure out how we're going to do the uh, the whole her interacting with the world as a sword. I know how I'm going to do it, but uh, i got to figure out exactly how it'll fit together. i got a couple of ideas thumping around in the old noggin. Rom-com weather. Great. Chapter two, the title of it is the is uh, Reptilian Void, which is uh, I like that title. I like that title. It makes sense if you read the chapter. Go read the chapter. But I, I like that title. It was uh, kind of a play on words, sort of. Um, but I think it just kind of sounds cool. I quite liked it. 
Kind of, kind of, it's like uh, writing these chapter titles is kind of like writing chap or episode titles for uh, for Killing Floor Two, almost. It's uh, it's weird because I uh, I write so many titles for for KF Two. It's hard to come up with titles, honestly. Sometimes it is. Um, so I don't. I try not to like run titles they've done before, but I have like. 492 as of this one, or 493 as of this one, I think. Like 493 episodes. Some of those are going to be overlapping. Like a thousand videos or something, if you take into account all the Amajack tries and Gunfire Reborns and everything. It's a lot of it's a lot of videos. It's a lot of titles. But uh, writing the titles for the uh, the chapters. Kind of feels similar, and I, it makes sense that it would, you know, because they're both titles of a uh, of fairly short contents. But I have, uh, I have, I enjoy it. I don't know why, but I enjoy making the title names. Just, just finding something that's somewhat related to the contents in the video. And and finding some kind of you know some kind of pun or a play on words or or uh, some kind of just a word that's kind of related to it that's a little bit distant and separate but but kind of related in in a strange way. You are here to writing the descriptions of the videos is also fun. I love writing the descriptions of the videos. If you guys aren't reading the descriptions, you're not missing too much. But I uh, I do put stuff in those descriptions. It is it is a different it's, it's different every time. I talk a little bit in there. It's not like you're missing much if you ain't doing it. I don't put anything super important in there. Um, well, not too much anyway, honestly. Some sometimes I will, if it's uh, like super important that uh, it's happening to me, but not super important that you know it. It'll typically end up in a description, and I might end up talking about it in a video as well. Yeah, what a shot! But uh, any anything that's uh, that's critical for you guys to know, I I, I do end up talking about the uh, in a video, of course, because I know that a lot of people don't read the descriptions. It's fine. Most most people's descriptions, you know, when you when you watch YouTube, most people's descriptions are just copy and paste, same thing every time. Which is fine. I mean, most people don't read the descriptions, so you don't have to put too much time into it. But it's kind of this like back and forth thing where we're you know you're not reading the descriptions because they're never interesting but they're never interesting because nobody's reading them so I uh, like to be the change that I like to see in the world hmm, what were they cooking and I write uh, I write descriptions they're not always interesting they're not always uh -oh. funny but uh, they're different every time and I I try to uh, I don't know be be witty or this funny or informative or something at least I don't always succeed I mean, again it's like a thousand videos on the channel okay it's a lot of videos. It's a big responsibility. Got a sneeze coming up. Come on. Come on. Just sneeze, please. Ah. It's not happening. I'm gonna have a runny nose now. Dang. Okay, well, we'll just kinda suffer then, I guess. I'm like crying. Uh, I hate this. When you when you have to sneeze, but you just like can't, and it like gets you like feeling weird and stuff, you know? That's what I'm at right now. Terrible feeling. Terrible feeling. I wish I could just sneeze. Oh well, is what it is. Um. Yeah, is what it is. We're coming up on episode 500 soon. That's a big milestone, right? Like that's that's a big milestone, right? Like 500 KF2 episodes, 500 videos of uh, of me shooting zombies in the face, and sometimes not the face, but usually the face. Okay, I'm pretty good at shooting them in the face, and and uh, in, in rambling about stuff that's uh, super not important. Or uh, trying to avoid controversial topics, but not necessarily always succeeding. That's the uh, that's the foundation of my channel right there. 
the foundation. You know, it was weird because uh, back five, six years ago, talking about politics was like a big no-no, right? Come see me. The pod safely opened. It was like nice. you, you didn't want to do that, right? I'm Nowadays, if you, if you ain't at least a little bit politically inclined, I, I feel like you're just going to get attacked for like... Either this is a giant paper cut being a wimp or, <laughs> or something. Anyway, you know, like like you can't win if, if you're not going to share your political opinion. Then you're 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 a little your little you know p word. That's a hint. I feel like is kind of the uh, the general kind of feeling these days, which is is weird because a lot of people who were like very staunchly against, very strongly against political of anything on on their channel. Nowadays, make jokes, like political jokes, and talk about politics on occasion. You know, there, there are some topics that you still want to uh, to avoid, of course, if you're trying to be a reasonable person. Like, I wouldn't want to necessarily... Um, like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll make jokes about uh, Trump being a big dummy, okay? Because he's a big dummy. But I'm not going to be, uh, you know, pulling up his tweets. I'm not going to be, like... Um, you know, talking about like the debates that he's been hold like having, like and that that kind of stuff is a little bit too far for me, you know. But I I feel like you kind of you kind of have to make your political stance clear on the internet these days, and I feel like it's it's honestly it's like not even that polarizing anymore, like, and I know that sounds weird, but but at least. With within your personal community as a YouTuber, I feel like it's not polarizing because I I I, I feel like I, I I feel like politics as a whole is way more polarized these days. To the extent where there's a pretty good chance that if you're you know right wing and you're a YouTuber, most of your audience will be right-wing, and if you're, you know, left-wing, then most of your audience will be left-wing, and if you're more centrist, then most of your audience will be more centrist, but those people don't exist. Um, but I, I feel like, um, because it's so polarized, individually, as, as you know, my own community here, it's, it's a lot more biased towards, uh, you know, more kind of progressive kind of uh, thing and I feel like that's kind of true of, of anybody's channel if you pick anybody their their entire you know fan base is, is typically gonna lean more towards their kind of um, political values which to a certain extent is dangerous because that's how you make like echo chambers and stuff but it's uh, it does it does kind of in a weird way make it almost safer to talk about politics now than it was, you know, five years ago. Just because five years ago, I feel like people wouldn't be upset at your, your opinion, necessarily. They'd be upset that you're bringing politics into their, um, you know, in, into their, you know, rest from politics. But nowadays, it's such a, like, frequent part of life. It's, it's like everywhere. You, you can't really avoid it. You know, it's, it's just like it's just, it's just so much stuff is happening that's that's all political and everything like things that don't need to be political are being made into like political debates and it's like you just can't get away from it. You know, like in order to not be political these days, you have to like not have any opinion on like LGBT people. You have to like not have any opinion on like mental disabilities. You have to not have any opinion on like government assistance. You have to like just the list of things that you have to avoid to to avoid being political is just so long because people are making so many things that just don't have to be political into into political things like you know gay people being allowed to like exist and be normal people shouldn't be politics. It, it should just be like you know, human, <laughs> you know, like, that That shouldn't be a politics thing. That, that should be, like, just a human rights thing. 
but but like it it is and uh, so many things like that, that that just have no purpose being political like uh, net neutrality was like this big political thing and it's like that just that doesn't really make sense like there's just this this big push for for like every issue is now uh, is now this like polarizing political value that that you're either you're on the right side or you're on the left side you know when when it's it just it, uh, it didn't used to be that bad not as not as badly anyway which is uh weird for sure It's uh, it's weird. I don't know if I'm making a good point or whatever, but I, I, I feel like just because so many things are now political, you know, politicized, if you will, um, you kind of can't avoid it, you know? Because like, I absolutely believe that gay people, any LGBT people, have rights. That that puts me, you know, now now I'm a liberal. You know what I mean? Like, just just because I said that, now I'm now I'm aligned with the the liberal perspective. Even even if I'm not necessarily liberal, you know, even if that's not what I would personally identify with, that's the like pool of people that I'm put into. You know? Just because I feel like uh, LGBT people should have like a right to exist. Um, and then it's kind of like, well, if you're already assumed to be you know, in one camp that you don't even necessarily agree with, you might as well pop out some, some you know, low controversy opinions that kind of uh, help to align your political beefs, beliefs to, to a little bit of a more accurate area without necessarily defining it precisely. You know what I mean? Like, just, just because so many things that don't need to be these, these huge political arguments are being made into huge political arguments, it's you, you can't really avoid it because if you're a reasonable person, you're you're gonna say something that that puts you in the the left camp. And yes, I'm saying that uh, that people in the right camp are are a little bit unreasonable, perhaps. That m might be uh, a little bit along what I said. But uh, you know, it's not everybody in the right camp is unreasonable. Everybody's got. I think that uh, again, it's like that's that's kind of the the thing, though, right? Is is it's it's a. It's too binary. You're either left or you're right. And the, and the reality is, it's a much, it's a much broader spectrum than that. And that's kind of being ignored. It's, it's, it's more of a, you know, globally, even. It's, it's more of a Trump versus, not Trump. You know, it's not, it's not even about the who, who the other person is. It's that they're not Trump. And that's on, uh, and that's on a fairly global scale. At least on the internet, because Americans will definitely let you know that you don't exist if you're not American. Anyway, the the moral of the story here is that um, politics are like weirdly more common on the internet now, even among people who previously avoided it like the plague. Just and and it's weird. I'm I'm fine with talking about things that are a little bit controversial. I think that that's kind of a uh, one of the draws to my channel is that I'll, I'll say what I believe. You know, I don't, I don't really have any issue with that. If that gets me in trouble, then it gets me in trouble. I believe what I believe, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hide it. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they they value the the prosperity of their channel more, and it's reasonable for them to. You know, if it's their livelihood or whatever, then then of course. But there's no reason to to introduce drama, but. You know, like, Northern Lion played uh, Among Us with, like, political leaders, you know? And, like, two years ago, three years ago, he would, like, ban any discussion of any politics on the NLSS. And he's, like, playing games with political leaders, like, clearly aligning himself with those in the eyes of the public. Whether that's his personal belief or not, you know, that's, that's definitely where he's publicly aligned. And, uh... It's it's weird seeing politics seep into so many things, and I think that it is because politics have become so much more polarized. That uh, you know, if you're already assumed to be on one side, I mean, can't do any harm by.
trying to be, you know, in your opinion, a nice person, whether you're on the right or the left, whether being a nice person is saying that gay people should have rights or shouldn't have rights. You can't really do, uh, you can't really do more harm by, uh, by trying to be nice, right? So, people do that, and then we have politics everywhere. It's crazy. COVID is a political issue. <laughs> like, why? Why is that a political issue? I don't know. It, it should really not be a political thing. It should really be a, like, hey, we're all dying. But somehow, politics. It gets into everything. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.